Let's just get this part out of the way at the beginning. I fell. Glasses fell off. A lot of blood on my hands. Hole in my pants. AirPod on the ground. One AirPod in the ear. Class. This hurts the most. That there. hurts. Scratch my face. Today I'm riding my one wheel, and if I fall, I'll probably die. <laughs> this is a bruise. This is a bruise. This is a bruise. There's some more on my arm. Here's some pictures. Whatever. We'll get to it. Let's start from the beginning. This is my one wheel. It's green. This is the XR, so this is the big boy version. I, I've been calling it the lady because uh, one of my bruises is on my lower back, and so uh, this is the lady and I'm the tramp. What do you guys think? If you have a better idea for a name, drop it in the comments. Day one, the one wheel gets here in the mail. I'm so excited. I bust open this giant heavy box, and I'm so excited to ride it, and then I have to charge it. So I wait very impatiently for like three hours to charge it. Then I put my attachments on, I put the dark olive on and make it look all clean, and then we head out. It's nighttime by now, I'm by myself. I go out to ride, and on the very first ride, I step up, and it was fine. It was comfortable. I felt the motor start to help me out, just like everyone on the internet told me would. I was like, okay, this isn't so bad. I'm going slow. I circle around, it's time to get off, and I'm like, okay, lift your heel. And I do it, and I royally mess it up, and I fall very first thing. <laughs> so on my very first ride, I didn't dismount properly. Fell on my elbow, I was already bleeding a little bit. <laughs> so it could only go uphill from there. So I go home, I clean off my elbow, I do a little more research on how to dismount properly, because I'd watched the videos, but now that the thing's in front of me, I can just trial and error it. So that's what I do, I just start to practice dismounting until I'm comfortable with the dismounting. And then once I get there, I started to ride and I practiced turning and I got a little more comfortable with that, just little by little. I was trying to stay humble and, you know, understand the board before I went fast where I could hurt myself. So I've practiced a little bit on this first day. I decided I wanna go for a real ride. It's still nighttime. I keep it on the baby setting on the board and I go for a ride and I ended up going 10 miles, which was a lot, honestly, for my first ride. One thing I'll tell you, a lot of people on the internet say that their legs hurt after their first ride or after long rides. That wasn't really true for me. It wasn't my legs that were sore, it was my feet and just my feet. What I figured out is when you're going fast, you hit all these little bumps, you're kind of just like moving ever so slightly. You get used to that moving, but all that vibration causes your feet to get really warm as well as the like muscle work that your feet are that your feet are doing gripping the board. That really makes your feet sore. So after that first 10 mile ride, I was like, "Dang, my feet hurt." So that's just a word of caution, like the XR goes 12 to 18 miles, and in my case, I was getting more than 20 miles out of it, but I don't know if I could ever ride it in a full lifespan because like my feet get sore and then I don't feel safe and comfortable on the board anymore, you know? Once we hit day two, I have a few more friends around and they wanna try the board out. They're all still pretty scared of it because I had already fallen, but they get on it, they dismount, I'm holding their hand, and that was super fun to me, to like show my friends and family, look at this thing I have, you wanna try it? I'm a quality time love language person, and one of the reasons I wanted a one wheel is because I knew it would be a conversation starter. Like when you're out in public writing, people will stare at you a lot, and some people will even talk to you and they'll be like, what, what is that? And you're like, oh, it's a one wheel, this is what it does. Um, I really like that, I like having that conversation starter. I think it's cool, but I'm a huge extrovert. So if that's not your thing, keep that in mind. When you get a one wheel, it does attract attention. On day three, I went for an actual like long ride. I drove to a nice part of town. I found a bike path and I rode it for like, I think like 12, 13 miles. This was the first ride where I started to get really comfortable with the one wheel, and I could also see how this thing was going to fit into my daily life moving forward. So before, I had a skateboard. Usually at night, I would go for skates, I would put my AirPods in, I'd listen to music, and it was a way to clear my mind, to get outside, and to just like find some space, right? Like do a little bit of exercise. I see that in the one wheel, except the one wheel does a few things a little bit better than the skateboard. It's electric, so you can go further for less effort. Skateboarding is exhausting after a while. You can't skateboard for like 12 miles. That, that would hurt. But a one wheel you can take further. So it is a legitimate commuter device as well as just a fun device. I'm sure you knew that, but like my personal experience, I felt that ring true and it's just fun. It's like, the most fun way. Like when you're going somewhere on the one wheel, you went somewhere, you got there. It's so much more exciting than like driving a car. Now we're on day four. Honestly, I don't really remember day four. You're watching footage of it right now. Um, I was just trying to rack up miles, 
rack up hours on the board, just get comfortable with it, you know? That, it was just another day in the books. Day five. So on day five, I had the board fully charged. I decided I wanted to go for a long ride. Like I was gonna try and almost kill the battery. So I head out and I went like 11 miles before turning around and I was turning around. I had already been out for like an hour and a half and I was feeling pretty good, right? Like I had had these five days experience. I hadn't fallen since the first day and just out of nowhere, I hit one bump. I couldn't steady myself in time. All of a sudden, face down on the floor. Looking back on that experience, the scariest thing was I've fallen on skateboards a lot. I have scars to show for it. When you fall on a skateboard, you kind of have time to recover. You can walk off a skateboard, but with a one wheel, you have to dismount it with two feet. And when you fall, the falls are a lot worse because they're, they're unexpected. They're a little cumbersome. So like, I fell on my face. You don't want to do that. Like, that's not good. <laughs> I'm fine. I don't have any lasting injuries, but it could have been a lot worse. Before anyone mentions it in the comments, I am buying a helmet. It's on the way, it's in the mail. Moving on. <laughs> I didn't really want to ride that day, but 12 hours had passed. Sometime that afternoon, I was like, I want to get on the board just to show that I can again. You know what I mean? So I rode like, I don't know, 100 feet. Finally, we get to day six. I'm ready to get back on the board, but I'm a lot more cautious this time. I'm much more conservative in my approach. I've fallen like, my confidence is much lower than before. I go for a ride with my friend Reese and I'm not going very fast. I'm very cautious around these bumps just cause I don't wanna fall when I've already injured myself. And I think this is a really interesting thing I wanna bring up. My friend Reese mentioned it to me, but it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And it basically maps confidence versus competence over time. When we first start something, we're very confident. And then something happens and we're, we realize we don't actually know as much about the thing as we thought. And then we slowly build that actual knowledge base over time. I had hit that bump and I realized how little I actually knew about the one wheel. And now I had to slowly rebuild my skill and knowledge over time. So basically I'm less confident on the one wheel than I was five days ago, but I am more competent at writing it for having this fall and having that experience. And now we're caught up to the present day. I've had my one wheel for a week. I've ridden it every day. What are my overall thoughts on it? Honestly, I love it. I knew I was going to love it. Like I'm not going to spend $2,000 on something that I hadn't extensively researched, had a purpose for, had a desire for, saved for over time. Talk about delayed gratification. Like I have no regrets when it comes to this purchase for me personally, but obviously everyone's different. Why did I buy the one wheel? Two reasons. One, commuting. I'm a college student. Instead of buying a parking pass, driving my car, spending money on gas, being worse to the environment, I bought a one wheel. And so now next semester I can ride the two miles to campus, have a really fun time doing it. It's cheaper, it's better for the environment, it's more fun. Reason number two, I make videos for this YouTube channel. I'm a freelance videographer. If you put a gimbal on top of a one wheel, you have a portable dolly shot and you can get stable footage going, you know, kind of fast. That's really cool. I wanted to do that. Bonus reason number three, it's so much fun. It's so cool. A one wheel, like what is this thing? Do you, look, here's a picture. Like this is from the future. This should not exist. So after a week, those are my thoughts. I have no regrets. My confidence is much lower. I don't wanna fall again. I have developed a healthy respect for the board. And I imagine if you buy your own one wheel, you'll feel the same way. If you're planning on getting a one wheel or have any questions at all, feel free to ask me in the comments. And if you live in Arizona, hit me up and maybe we'll go for a ride together. That'd be fun. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to. Peace.